What's up, my friends? I pray that you're blessed, that you are standing strong in your faith. So I want to talk about Israel and what's going to happen at some point down the road with Israel and Russia. Now, you've been hearing a lot of talk probably these last few weeks about Gog and Magog and people pulling out this ancient prophecy uh, in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And some people have even taken that passage, and though they believe that it's referring to Russia, that that's actually unfolding right now before our eyes, that the prophecy is being fulfilled. I wouldn't go to that uh, extreme or to that extent, but I do believe that we are seeing the making. We're seeing things being played out on the world stage that will lead to what the prophet Ezekiel mentioned over 2,600 years ago. Now, let me just be upfront. I believe that we're living in the last days. I believe right now, as we're seeing the escalation of warfare, this goes back to the Olivet Discourse, what Jesus told us in Matthew 24 and 25 and Mark 13 and Luke 21. He said one of the signs, he referred to them as birth pain, something that Paul the Apostle mentioned in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, or excuse me, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, in reference to the Antichrist coming in, in, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, that we're seeing the makings of this, that this is all going to lead eventually to an invasion uh, that, that, that Russia is going to lead with Islamic armies on Israel unexpectedly. And that at some point down the road, uh, as we see these world leaders, these dictators who try to dominate the world, this will lead ultimately to a figure known as the Antichrist, according to Daniel 7, the little horn, who rises from the Mediterranean in Revelation 13, and that, that Paul mentions in 2 Thess Thessalonians chapter 2, who's known as the son of perdition. So I take a literal hermeneutic, an historical literal hermeneutic to prophecy. So I do believe at some point this Gog and Magog invasion will take place prior to the rapture. And there are some people who would argue that the, the invasion of Russia on Israel will happen after the rapture at some point during the tribulation period. I don't necessarily see that, but I do think that at some point before Christ comes and takes his church, uh, suddenly and unexpectedly, that this invasion will take place. So when you and I, though, are living right now, you're saying, Jay, what does that have to do with Israel? What does that have to do with me? It has a lot. Because Jesus forewarned us, you guys, that there will be wars and rumors of wars. But we are not to be alarmed. And so one thing I want to say to people watching and listening out there, let's not panic. I'm a father of four. You know, I can get worried at times about the budget and inflation and costs at the pump. I got, you know, uh, my wife drives, I drive, my, my teenager's driving and, you know, bills need to be paid. And, but, the, the, but, but we are citizens of heaven. We are so grateful for what we have in this world, the freedoms that we have. But more importantly, we're, Philippians 3.20, we have an inheritance in heaven. We're citizens there. And, and, and bombs are not dropping where I live, thank God. But how can I aid and support the Ukrainian people, the people who are under attack by an evil regime? What more can we do to spread the gospel, to make disciples? But as we're seeing these signs unfold and as things escalated, because I'll be honest, I didn't think in my lifetime I'd be seeing the kind of warfare that we're seeing. Even right now that we're on the hills uh, you know, on the precipice of, of, of entering World War III potentially. And we have to pray against that. But Jesus did forewarn us. Matter of fact, here's the, co the comfort that we can take, my friends, is Luke 21, 28. Know when these things begin to take place. Straighten up, raise your heads because your redemption draws near. Isn't that encouraging that despite what evil we're seeing in this world, at some point, Christ will come and he will restore all things. That's the hope, my friends, that you and I can take. So when you're looking at what's taking place with Russia and what's taking place in Ukraine and in Europe and how NATO's responding or lack of response or the EU or the United Nations, you look at Israel, my friends, you look at Israel. Matter of fact, let me show you guys a map here that puts things in perspective of uh, Israel with its uh, neighboring countries. Notice Europe here, and you have Russia in red. Of course, they're wanting to conquer more into Europe and, and gain more control there. But notice the alliances that, that Russia, we know, has with Iran, 
Turkey, Syria, for example, right now, but all these Muslim countries that surround the Holy Land. This is significant, you guys, because when we look at Scripture now, at some point, Russia is going to turn against Israel. Now, let me say this, because people are up in arms right now with Israel uh, preventing certain military weapons to go into Ukraine, and they're taking a neutral, uh, you know, there's like a balanced approach, if you will. There's a lot of delicacy, as you can imagine, that's going on between Israel and Russia and Israel with Ukraine. And a lot of people are thinking that Israel needs to be doing more. They need to be standing strong against the attacks of Putin. Now, they've come out and condemned them. They're providing aid, but think, people think they need to be more uh, cognizant and more involved and invested in making decisions to to provide peace talks between the two parties. And certainly Israel's trying to do that, but people are thinking they're not doing enough. And one of the reasons people need to understand this is because Russia, in some sense right now, is protecting Israel. But at some point, we see in Scripture here in Ezekiel 38 that Russia is going to turn against Israel when they least expect it. Notice in verse 7, be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered. In the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war, the land whose people were gathered from many peoples um, upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. You will advance coming on like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land. You and all your hordes and many peoples with you. Notice verse 12 here. To see, spoil, and carry off plunder. To turn your hand against the waste places that are now inhabited. And, and the people who were gathered from the nations who were acquired livestock and goods who dwell at the center of the earth. Now, when you look at Russia's war in Ukraine, there are prophetic implications, you guys, that are definitely tied there that are going to lead to this invasion at some point. So we got to pay close attention that Ezekiel prophesied of a military coalition that will embark on a surprise attack on Israel. This is known, you guys, as the Russian Islamic invasion in Israel. So when you go back to this map here, Israel has to be very very delicate in the way that it maneuvers things. This mentioning when you go back here in Ezekiel 38, this individual Gog, at some point, it could be Putin. I highly doubt it, but it'll be a figure like Putin, probably even stronger than him, who's like a supreme being, a king, not a superhero. Some people, you know, not going crazy like that, but like a military genius, a military leader. And Magog here in scripture, that's what we see is a geographical location. It's the southern portion of Russia. It's also referenced here as the Prince of Rosh, not because Rosh, Rosh and Russia sound familiar, but that is the term that we get from here because it's also referring to the remote, uh, remotest parts of the north, and we know that the term north is to be understood in relation to Israel. Again, when you go back to the map, further north of Israel is right here is, is Russia. So when you're looking at the text here, we do know that this figure, this supreme chief leader of Russia will assemble these Islamic nations against, um, against Israel. And it's not going to be pretty for the countries that are going to invade Israel. We know Turkey's one of them, Lebanon, and guess what, Syria. Which brings me to this other thing that I want to discuss with you guys is when you look at what's happening right now with Israel, Russia protects, is protecting them, their airspace, you know, the, their defense, because you think about how many times Syria wants to go after uh, Israel. Notice what this journalist has to say in connection with the relationship that Israel has right now with Russia and with Ukraine. Right now, that's because Russia controls Syrian airspace and Israel needs to cooperate with Russia to defend itself against Iranian forces and proxies just over its border with Syria. So on the one hand, Israel needs Russia to defend itself against what it sees as an existential threat. On the other hand, Israel's closest ally is the U.S., who will likely want it to support U.S.-led sanctions. This puts Israel in a difficult position 
diplomatically, and Foreign Minister Lapid has suggested that Israel will wait and see when it comes to sanctions. This is Jody. Okay, so basically, in a nutshell, you see what she's saying as the Prime Minister uh, uh, Naftali Bennett uh, said, and when I'm recording this, just not too long ago, that Israel has worked throughout Russia's invasion of Ukraine to help defuse a conflict while protecting its own interests, while they have to be considerate of how they maneuver through this because Israel is concerned for the thousands of Jews that are living in Ukraine and also living in Russia. They're also concerned for the safety of their own country, as I showed you in the map, how they're surrounded by a bunch of Islamic nations that hate Israel. Uh, there are still active Russian military people, you guys. There's a presence of Russian military in Syria. And that's why it's not that Israel uh, is against Ukraine, uh, is against those NATO countries. Israel is against what Russia is doing. They don't support that. They're not in favor. They're not in solidarity with Russia. But we have to understand that right now there is this alliance to protect Israel from being invaded. But at some point, you guys, as we're seeing all this stuff unfold, and we don't know when this war, if ever, it's going to end. We pray to God that it does. But we don't know after this invasion. And however the world steps in there to help Ukraine uh, and Poland and other uh, nations that are going to be affected by this, and just because right now here in America we're affected by it, the pump or some inflation, bombs aren't dropping. We don't have troops coming in here taking away our freedoms, like what's happening in Ukraine. But we don't know when this is going to end, what it's going to look like when at some point there's a ceasefire and there's a peace agreement of some sort. But what we do know in Scripture, guys, is at some point Russia, led by these other, or that Russia will lead with these other Islamic nations, that they will go against this treaty right now, this alliance they have with Israel. And they're going to try to destroy Israel. But we're told, when you continue to read in, into Ezekiel 39, that they will be utterly destroyed, these nations. So Russia will come out of this, you guys, not to the point where they're going to be, uh, you know, way, way stronger than as they're invading Ukraine right now. Because we see that economically it's a disaster. We see hyperinflation hitting them. We see militarily that they're scattered. They're the second most powerful military as we know, but we don't know how powerful they will be in this invasion against Israel. But God supernaturally, one, it says that he will prevent nations from stepping in there to protect Israel. And that's what's interesting about this, you guys, because no one's really coming militarily right now to support Ukraine. For the most part, they're saying because they're not part of NATO. But isn't it interesting that as Israel is trying to be you know sensitive and delicate to how they're dealing with things geopolitically between ukraine and russia at some point they're going to be invaded by russia and no one's going to come to their aid so as i close just let, let's be reminded of two passages of scripture as we think about israel we think about what's happening in ukraine we pray for the rest of the world but but specifically when it comes to god's people psalm 25 verse 22 says redeem israel O god out of all of his troubles in psalm 122 verse 6 says pray for the peace of jerusalem May they be secure who love them. Join me as we pray for the world, but specifically join me as we pray for God's chosen people, that God will protect them and guide and provide for them, and that the Jewish people would come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Mm -hmm.